Steve Adubato here. We welcome back Rick Digpen, Senior Vice President of Corporate Citizenship at PSCG. We're not talking energy here. We are talking military history. Rick has been doing a series of interviews with us on important figures, New Jersey-based and other leaders, part of a powering equity and social justice initiative powered by uh, Rick and his colleagues. Today, we focus on General Norman Schwarzkopf. Born in Trenton, New Jersey, Rick? Born in Trenton, New Jersey, the grandson of a German immigrant. We'll show some pictures. We'll show some pictures of the general. Uh, uh, track his history back to the state and his international implications as a military leader. Well, he's the grandson of German immigrants, as you mentioned, a native of great Trenton, New Jersey. Just reminded everybody how much of an impact New Jersey continues to have on American history. His father was the first superintendent of the state police. And in that capacity was the lead investigator in the infamous or famous Lindbergh kidnapping. Lindbergh trial. A, a, a Lindbergh trial, where his child was kidnapped. And it was taking place in the Flemington Courthouse, I believe, in 1932. That's right. He was also a colonel in the United States Army. And he passed that on to his son, who we now know became a four star general, General Norman Schwarzkopf, who's famous to us all from Operation Desert Storm. At the time of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, he was the commander of the United States Central Command, which involved that part of the world. And in that capacity, he coordinated all of the land operations for the over 250,000 US troops involved in Operation Desert Storm. We all know that was a successful military operation. It earned him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It earned him enormous popularity and fame as successful military leaders frequently do as we can, I can just mention a few like General Eisenhower would be the most recent example of that. And he was a very successful leader. He made the a case that a successful military leader needs character and strategy. And if you have to do without one, do without the strategy. And he, so he's someone we admire. They called him Storm and Norman. He comes from New Jersey. He made a meaningful impact on our country's history in that he was a successful leader of the very big uh, military operation. And uh, he's someone we all know. He retired with the Presidential Medal of Freedom and yet another New Jerseyan who left their mark on the United States of America and arguably on the globe. And Steve, I will jump in and, and just mention two other names very quickly. One is General Ray Odierno from Rockaway, New Jersey, a four-star general and commander of the U.S. Army's 4th Infantry Division that captured Saddam Hussein at that time. He, did, he later became the Army Chief of Staff. Very successful gentleman from Rockaway. And then there's General Peter Pace from Teaneck, New Jersey, another four-star general who became chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, another one who had enormous impact on our country. So New Jersey continues to make you know, enormous contributions, and we would be remiss to forget that young woman who is a former Navy pilot and federal prosecutor named Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill from the 11th Congressional District, who's in office today, a former military leader, now a member of Congress, and we shall see what the future has in store for that young lady. But she's enormously talented and capable of doing even more than she's doing today. And yet another example of how New Jersey and public service continues to have an impact on this country. You know, again, part of, part of this uh, series, uh, Powering Equity and Social Justice, Rick has joined us. And we, he did another full segment on the legacy, the impact of the great General Colin Powell, who was Secretary of State and a whole range of other important uh, national titles. But one of the things with Rick that we've learned is that it's important to feature these people, because if we do not understand our history, if we do not understand who these people are, it's hard to think, put things in perspective today. So here's my question, Rick. You mentioned several military leaders who come out of New Jersey, not just General Schwarzkopf. Do you believe, and this is, I don't want this to be a trick question, but it is something I've been thinking about. Do you believe that military leadership then, as what it described the leadership that the, everyone you just mentioned in this segment, their kind of military leadership actually prepares people for public service outside of military leadership. Mikey Sherrill ran for Congress, is in Congress. We don't know what the future is going to be. But it's a long-winded way of asking, is military leadership in any way significantly different from leadership in other arenas that are not military-centric? 
Well, military leadership certainly requires enormous discipline and a commitment to your country. Mikey Sherrill, for instance, was in the first graduating class in the Navy where women were eligible for combat. She's a little bit part of history. General Odierna was the grandson of Italian immigrants. General Pace was the son of Italian immigrants. So the military is also part of that great American melting pot where people, no matter where you come from, have a chance to prove yourself as an American, to make a great contribution in the form of public service. It does instill discipline. It instills commitment to your country. It instills a sense of paying attention to what's right and what's wrong. And so arguably, a, a military training is one of the greatest ways to serve, the, serve your country, and it can clearly prepare you for public service. We all know that some military leaders are not appropriate for public service, but many have shown that they are. And our country has a long line of military leaders, you know, in elected, high elected office. I use General Eisenhower, but we go back to General Washington, to General Andrew Jackson, to General William Henry Harrison, to General Zachary Taylor, and, and none of us could ever forget General Grant. So our, our country has a long history of military leaders serving in high elected office. It is a great way for people to serve their country. And many of these people that I've talked about today from New Jersey have an immigrant background. And I think it's just a fantastic story of why we are such, why we are the greatest nation on this earth, Steve. So I, I just appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. I think the more we talk about it, the more we come together and recognize that, Steve, you come from a different background than I do. But that's why this is a great country because we can work together to make you know, America better by contributing in our respective fashions. Absolutely right. And by the way, uh, our, produ our great producers behind the scenes will show pictures of all these different people and try to bring their faces and some of their experiences to life. But we encourage you, as we put the names of those leaders up, to do your own research and find out more. Hey, Rick, cannot thank you enough for putting military leaders and, and military leadership in perspective, particularly those who come from Jersey, as we continue to um, uh, engage in powering equity and social justice. Thank you, Rick. Steve, let me close on one high note. I met General Powell at Seton Hall University when he came to speak. And he was, he, so he's not a new, he's the only, he's only non-New Jersey we talk about, but he has been to New Jersey. And I had a great experience with him at Seton Hall. He was such a gentleman, a thoughtful man, a world leader. It was just remarkable to meet him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and meeting General Powell for me, when he was promoting America's promise, talking about volunteerism, was an extraordinary opportunity as well. I was in awe of his presence. Hey, Rick, thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Steve, and thank you for powering equity and social justice. Yeah, and let me finally just go as PSEG is not just a significant supporter of our work, but the work of NJ, PBS, a whole range of programs there as well. They support public broadcasting. Thank you, Rick. Yes, thank you, Steve. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care. New Jersey Sharing Network, Holy Name, the New Jersey Education Association, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Russell Berry Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, the Fidelco Group, and by Caldwell University. Promotional support provided by Meadowlands Chamber and by ROINJ. Data shows that many patients have avoided seeking critical health care in the wake of COVID-19 for fear of contracting the virus. Delaying medical care can have serious consequences, so you should never second guess or ignore your symptoms. At Holy Name Medical Center, we have measures in place to prevent infectious disease from spreading. We're clean, we're open, and we're safe for all your healthcare needs.